Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet are less than a month away, and I was lucky enough to go hands-on with a special demo build specifically of Pokemon Scarlet. I could explore a large area and tackle three main story tasks in any order. I opted to get a taste of as many things as I could in the hour I had, including the Let's Go feature, picnics, a Starfall Street challenge, a gym test and battle, plus character customization. Here are my hands-on impressions of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet with brand new gameplay footage provided by Nintendo. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet take place in the Paldea region, widely to believe inspired by Spain and perhaps the entirety of the Iberian Peninsula. They're the first truly open world style Pokemon game, which should let you go where you want, when you want to, with three different storylines to follow at your discretion. In the demo I played, I spawned by the main character's home with the legendary Pokemon Koridon already in tow and fast travel points to choose from. But I immediately set out to have a picnic and check out the new Let's Go feature. While picnicking, you can play with, take photos of, and bathe your Pokemon. I made my own sandwich too, which was novel enough, but I likely wouldn't revisit the feature often if it weren't for the small buffs the meals provide. After a short picnic, I tried out the new Let's Go feature, which lets one of your Pokemon engage in auto battles and pick up items as you explore, even while you're mounted on your legendary Pokemon companion. I'm concerned if your Pokemon will also attack a shiny Pokemon indiscriminately, but at least I know you can call it back. By the way, throwing a Pokeball directly at a wild Pokemon does not catch it, it just initiates a battle. The experience earned from an auto battle is still shared with the whole party, but is largely decreased. This is honestly a relief. If auto battles granted the same amount of XP as a normal wild Pokemon battle, I'd probably accidentally power level, especially since I'll be using auto battles to collect Pokemon materials dropped by defeated wild Pokemon. These Pokemon materials are needed to craft TMs, another new system introduced in Scarlet and Violet. However, you won't know what materials are needed until you found them first, making auto battles almost a necessary addition for this new system to be fun instead of arduous. Curiously, I made eye contact with an NPC, but that didn't initiate a battle. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, NPCs who want to battle have an icon above their head, signifying that they will battle, but only if you interact with them. On one hand, removing mandatory battles can decrease perceived difficulty, but on the other, a lack of deterrence encourages exploration. And I can now see myself easily succumbing to the song of environmental sidetracking. We also don't know yet if some areas will have forced trainer battles. Who's to say? The battling will be very familiar to Pokemon fans. Terrasilizing is the only new thing I saw, which essentially changes your Pokemon's type to its Terra type and boosts that type's moves. There can be unexpected rare Terra types to look out for, though. After I explored on Koridon, I fast traveled to nearby the Starfall Street storyline objective. To infiltrate their base, I had to defeat 30 Pokemon in 10 minutes with the Let's Go auto battles using three Pokemon at once. Because I knew the star team members here used Fire-type Pokémon, I prepped my team accordingly and had no trouble barreling through everything they threw on me in just a few minutes. I was told if I had chosen the Ice-type Setiton for this, it certainly would not have survived. The ensuing battle with the leader, the fancy boot-wearing Mila, surprised me. I fought the actual Starmobile, and the battle could have been quite difficult if not for the Armor Rogue on my team. On the other hand, the gym leader Brassius was a pushover against my Ice-type Setitan, though I was told my Pokémon were a little stronger than what you'd normally have by that point. Finally, I have to mention the customization options, which are more robust than I've seen in any Pokémon game to date. Here are just a few of them. Overall, Pokémon Scarlet and Violet seem to shake up the traditional Pokémon formula in more ways than one. With an open world to explore freely, three stories to tackle on your own terms, four-player co-op, and more. Despite my lingering questions about how the open world and four-player co-op actually work, there's enough new here to make me highly anticipate a new Pokémon journey once Pokémon Scarlet and Violet are released on November 18th. For more on Pokémon Scarlet and Pokémon Violet, don't miss the newest trailer featuring the gym leader Iono. And for everything else, you're already at the right place. IGN.